In this episode, we're going to talk about the lessons that we learned in the very first race weekend of 2022 in Bahrain. Race drivers, it's Enzo with the Race Driver Coach Show, episode two of season six. And I've just got off the plane from Bahrain, got three hours sleep, and I'm hitting record button because I will run a share with, with you. And I think it's a good topic, actually, a, good, a few good topics for, for the show um, of the kind of things we went through and what we learned from it and how what we learned and what we're going to work on with the drivers that I was there with. I was there with Ollie Behrman, obviously, in F3 in his first race weekend, and Liam Lawson in F2. And the things we're going to work on are applicable to you, no matter what you're doing in life. A race weekend is, is a certain environment where you go through many different emotions, many different situations, where you're thrust into the spotlight, where you're competing on the main stage. So you can imagine that just one race weekend can offer you up to 10 different lessons, 10 things that you think, right, I've got to be good at this next time or better, or something I am good at, or something that is applicable to life, like I said, or to your career, your business, your racing, whatever it is, that we can extract from it, from a race weekend, believe it or not, and use it to help you better your life and your performance, personal performance. So there's just a couple of things I want to cover in this that I know that are applicable to anybody who's competing. So first off, If we look at F1 and F2, it's going to be the same lesson that we took from these two races. Now, I want to use Mercedes, especially with Hamilton and Liam in the F2. I'm talking about the race one now. The biggest thing I took away from this weekend is the one word, and it's perseverance. If you're chasing a career, or if you're on track, or if you're on a court or in the boardroom, perseverance really is when things are, in this context, when things are not really going well, when your car is not quick enough, when you're not competitive, you're not fast enough, you're not good enough at that time, in that particular moment, it's how you deal with that and how you keep moving forward, how you keep going, even though you haven't got the right tools in in your hand. You haven't really got anything to fight with. But perseverance is having the tools that you've got and just getting the best out of them. And this can be even your skills as as an individual. Say it's your skills as a race driver, your skills as a salesperson, if it's something you, that's what you're doing, sponsorship or anything, you're selling anything. We're all selling something, right? And if you haven't really got the knowledge or the skills, it's how do you get through that meeting? How do you get through that sporting event and access the maximum and do the best you can do at that particular time with what you've got. Now, just to give you an example, in race one, in the F2 car, it just, the first race, it followed qualifying of F1. So when we were on track in the morning, this sandy track, hadn't really, only F3s have really been on it and Porsches. So it was quite a green track, we call it, when it's got low grip, went on had a feel for the car, see what it's like, did four push laps. That's pretty much all you do in the, in these cars nowadays to get an idea of where the car's at, to get your eye in for the track. And that's free practice pretty much done then, right? Once you've done that, maybe six push laps and the rest is kind of sim in a race or something. So you go out there, you do that. Then the next time you hit the track, F1 has been out and done qualifying. Half an hour after that, you're out. And you can imagine when you go on the track, after F1 and all that tire, all that new rubber from the Pirellis, the reds, the softs has been laid on the track. It's completely different. There's more grip, but more importantly, the car handles differently. So everybody on the grid would have gone into that race. Actually, sorry, qualifying was on a dusty track as well. This is race one after F1 qualifying. When we went on, Fuel, the fuel tank is full, obviously, to get through the sprint race, but it's different. The car handles different now. Now the circuit has got a lot of grip. All of a sudden, the car that you had was a bit understeery is no longer understeery. It's very oversteery, or vice versa, or it's gripping too much and it's bogging the car down. It changes what you feel. 
And the drivers then have to adjust things. They have to play with the brake bias. They have to manage the tire, the race lines in a certain way, just because that rubber's down now. It's not just a case of, oh, I can just brake later and put the power on earlier because it's grippier. It's nothing to do with that. Well, not much. It's more that the car balance is feeling different. You're shifting at different times. You're taking gears in different corners sometimes. And it's whoever can use the tools they've got, like brake bias is big. It's huge because if you've got too much front end grip, believe it or not, you put the brake bias forward to get more heat into the brakes. The brakes heat the tires up. That burns the front tires and takes away some of this grip you've got. So then the rear is stronger. Makes sense? The problem with an F2 car is if you keep going forward on the brake bias to generate heat, the rear brakes start to go to sleep. These are carbon brakes. So they get cold, it gets loose, the tires get cold, it gets even looser. So you have to put it back and then it starts to get um, oversteery because there's too much temperature at the rear. You go forward again, you start locking up the front. So you're constantly, every single lap, changing where you put the heat in the car through brake bias, through your driving, how you're exiting the corners. And you're trying to figure this out, which is hard enough on its own. But then in a race, in Liam's case, he was being attacked by Drogovic all the time so he was figuring this out managing when Drogovic looked like he wasn't struggling as much and he kept throwing the car at him uh, he had DRS on him as well so it's it's major pressure to take that car around the track compete even though you're not happy with it and you're trying to figure out how to unlock the the speed the lap time this is how hard it is to race guys honestly, at this level, and this is still nowhere near F1. It's even harder to get to race an F1 car and deal with the issues and change the setup on the steering wheel as you're driving. But in an F2, it's like this. But you have to have the mental capacity to deal with it. Driving is one thing. Yeah, I can do a lap time. But creating the car that you want through your driving and through the tools you've got is a whole, whilst you're fighting, remember, whilst you're under the pressure for a very high position, you finish P3 in that race, so quite a good position. You're not hanging on to it, but you're just trying to compete and chase number two down while you're being attacked. It is a mental battlefield. And this is why I love it so much, because obviously that's the, where I teach mostly. And he handled it brilliantly, by the way. He got the most out of the car and brought it home in the position that was pretty damn good for the first race of the season. But I just wanted to just take it to you now and teach you something from it. And that is when things are not going to plan, you haven't quite got the, you're standing up on stage, for example, standing up on stage, you're about to give this speech, public speaking, and you find out that your notes are not working on your computer or it's been wiped and you don't know what you were going to speak about. It's how you persevere and get through those moments when you haven't really got what you thought you had or you're not as good as you thought you were. It's still getting the best out of it. And it all comes down to your focus. What are you thinking about in the moments? You can ease, you've got a choice. You can start to point that torch and start to think about things like, why is this happening? I can't believe it's happening. You know, why me? You start to go to victim mode. You start to go into defense mode, like we spoke about before. Before you know it, you're being overtaken. Before you know it, you're stumbling your words on the stage or you're not getting the best out of that situation at all, out of yourself because you're letting the current situation, which is not perfect, that you find yourself in, completely control you, even though it's out of your control. And the big saying is, it's quite insane, really, for you to let things out of your control, control the way you feel. That's something I live by. So if the weather's bad and it affects your mood, and you live in England, <laughs> you're going to be in a, a grumpy mood most of the time. So it's, Everything that's outside of me and I can't influence, the only thing I can influence is how I deal with it and how I translate it and how it sits inside my mind and affects my body and my performance. So if somebody hits you on track, if somebody hits you in the face, in the ring, if you're a fighter, where does your mind go? Does it take the option of going to victim and defense and I can't believe this is happening and, and it basically blocks and goes into a shell and freezes or the second option is okay i've been dealt this card a bit like poker what am i gonna do and in a in a situation in a race or in sport or business very often you can't fold 
you've got to persevere. And we saw it again in F1 with Hamilton and Mercedes. Now you know it's off the pace. Your car's off the pace. They're having to do something to the car, which I don't think I can share with you, but they're having to do something to the car because of the new regs in a way that's making it slower. So it's not that they've built a bad car at all. They're just having to manipulate it in a way because something that's happening down the straights, which you know, which means I have to have a certain setup to deal with it. And that setup's making them slower, right? That's all it is. Once they sort that out, they're going to be up the front again. Anyway, he persevered. People broke down. You saw the two Red Bulls break down. People had incidents. They just kept going. Mercedes, Hamilton, kept going, kept lapping, head down, getting the maximum out of everything they've got. Boom, there they are on the podium. And their main rivals from last year, didn't even score if anyone drops the ball but you don't even though you haven't got the right score tools or skills you're going to beat them it's a tortoise of the hare right it's that story again so take this message from this race weekend if i don't have all in place i still must persevere if it's if it's not the situation i want to be in or i find myself in a situation that i'm comfortable with am i going to give up by focusing on why is this wrong and all the bad things about it, or am I going to take what I've got and I'm going to run with it and maximize it? This is a, a question, shall we say, and a decision that you have every single day. I'm going to let this traffic, now it's going to make me late for this meeting, annoy me, or am I going to use this time to put something on Spotify, a podcast, and learn as I'm sat here? and get better as a person. I'm going to learn a new skill. I'm going to put YouTube on, only listen to it, obviously, not watch it while you're in the car. And I'm going to learn a new skill. I'm going to use this time now to get better. Thank God I've got this traffic. I'm going to get better. Who cares if I'm late? So again, two decisions, two ways of looking at it. Persevere, that is connected to perseverance. But persevere really is what's happened to you recently. That is out of your control, or that you just haven't got the tools for, and you gave up. Or you didn't give it your best. You let the situation defeat you. Take a look around you. How have you done it recently? And did you do that? Or did you make the most of it anyway? Did you enter that race with that cart that was way off the pace, but you still got the most out of it? Which, by the way, is a good thing. If you're a race driver and you're not got the best kit underneath you, you're not got the best car to the best car, the best bike, and you still compete, and you give it your best, you're learning certain skills there that kind of like Liam did when he's back in New Zealand with cars that weren't that competitive. You're learning skills of how to drive a bad car, how to drive around handling characteristics that most people would just give up on and say it's undrivable. But when you then get into a good car, you'll be dynamite. So perseverance is always, I'm going to keep going no matter what challenge is thrown at me. Look at your life now, see in the past how You've dealt with that. Maybe it wasn't good. I've got to get better. Brilliant. Awareness is number one. Next is how am I going to have more perseverance in my life? Am I being told no every time I ask for a sponsor or try and sell something? Fine. I'm going to change who I ask. I'm going to change the way I'm asking. Perseverance. You will get there in the end. And the second lesson I want to share with you is from Ali Behrman's race, race one. Now, let me just give you the, the lowdown on what happened here. This is a kid starting from P2 because he didn't have a great qualifying. He was, he was here 11th um, and it got reversed, obviously, because the first grid is the top 12 reverse. So he's starting second. Here we go. We're on the front row of his first ever F3 race on the main stage at an F1 meeting. You can imagine that's quite a big moment for him. It's probably his biggest moment so far, apart from winning the championship last year, but it's a big deal and it's current. Like I'm in there now. I'm sat on P2. This is my chance. I can see P1's gone for new tyres. I'm not going to. I've got the faith that I can still beat him even though I haven't got new tyres. Let's do this. Gets into the lead. Pulls away. He's three and a half seconds in the lead. And you're thinking, this is going good. Then what happens is one lap to go. He gets a message saying that you've used track limits. Uh, We've got a black and white flag, a warning flag. Don't use track limits again. The problem is, by the time he got the message, he'd just done it again. Two 
uh, track limits equals that you are now going to get a five second penalty. So he crosses the line in first place. Victory throws his arm out. Really happy. I've won my first ever F3 race. Amazing. I couldn't have hoped for better. Um, and then on the slowdown lap, you're told by your engineer, sorry, mate, you did track limits twice. You got a five second penalty. You finished P2. So you can imagine now disappointment. On the slowdown lap, you're told that. You spend the rest of the slowdown lap furious. Furious at yourself, furious at the situation. And you've only got that tiny amount of time to collect yourself. So when you get out the car, okay, it's crap. I really wanted to win. It was, you know, he's making history, isn't it? If you win on your first race in a new championship, it's like a Hollywood storyline. But he, he took it. He came back and he was like, disappointed. But by the time he'd come back and got out the car and weighed himself and came to see the team, he had it under control. So he might have swore, he might have threw things. He didn't say it over the radio, he might have punched the steering wheel. He might have done a lot of things and said a lot of things on that slowdown and that in lap. And as he was parked up, just sat there thinking about it and angry or whatever it went emotionally. But he collected himself and got back to the team and his head was on next. I mean, he knew I was going to remind him that he's done it before or whatever. Or, you know, that was dropping the ball a little bit. But he didn't actually know he'd done the track limits. He was told late. And then by the time he was told, he'd done it again. Everyone was doing it, by the way, track limits, because it's so easy at that certain corner. But he could blame people. He didn't. He just looked within, learned from it, handled the, handled the disappointment straight away. And his mind was on race two. And even though he was dying inside, probably, he didn't show it. That is another skill that I want you to take into life. When you've had disappointment, it's, it hurts everybody virtually in the same way. It's a kick in the guts. You put it on yourself. You attach your ego to it, your identity of how you are in this, who you are in this world. You know, I'm only as good as my results. I can't believe I've messed up in front of everybody on this main stage. You can go anywhere you want with it, right? You beat yourself up for a little bit. But it's the, the real skill is how long you spend in that phase. So the peed off stage, the pissed off stage, how long do you hold on, that, hold on to that for? That is another success secret. The smaller, the less duration of time you can get that down to and put yourself into solution mode, the more successful you'll be. And a lot of people say, yeah, ends, but that's just denying the emotions that are coming in and the situation It's being deluded. Fine, be deluded. Because again, it's a choice. It's a decision. Am I going to swim inside this mistake I've made all day after and let it affect the next race and let it be my story of why I'm the victim again? Or am I going to take it in? Am I going to, yeah, okay, deal with it. It hurts like hell. But I'm going to start to say, right, very quickly, what are we going to do about this? How am I going to make sure that doesn't happen again? What systems can be put in place on told earlier or I don't do it? Or when we're on the next track walk, we look for the certain places where it could be a hazard and I'll make sure I won't do it again. As soon as you put your mind there, start to get to solution-based thinking. How is this horrible moment I'm going through right now going to serve me forward? Because when I'm on a big, even bigger stage, it's going to be even more of a, um, a further fall, right? If I make these mistakes. So thank God I'm making it now, this mistake. You attaching gratefulness now to what just happened. You can't help but get rid of disappointment if you've got gratitude in there. Say, right, how can we use this? It's going to serve me two, three, four, ten years down the line. Then you can start to let it go. Also, coming back to the pit lane, you don't want to be the person that's down and trying to be picked up by the team. You're the leader. You're the leader of the emotions of the people in the team. So if you come back, yeah, you're, you're peed off with yourself. It didn't go right, but you're determined to put it right. You're determined to fix it and to make all, all of you stronger as a unit. That is a leader. So the second lesson really is overcoming disappointment. How long you stay there in the moment of can't believe this happened woe is me, victim, and move on to solution-based, thinking forward, how can we use this and move on? Now, can you imagine how much better your life will be or how much more of a chance of succeeding you will have 
if you incorporate more perseverance and you can handle disappointment better. They're linked. These two are linked. Life throws me this curveball. What do I do with it? Do I hold on to it, hide behind it and say, this is the reason why I can't succeed or didn't succeed and take that to your deathbed or your rocking chair when you're 90 years old? Or do you look at the curveball? Do you adjust? Still hit you in the face, maybe. But you learn from it and you become better. So every single mistake then adds to the champion that you're going to become, to the warrior. Every warrior's got scars. They've been on the battlefield. They have fought. They've taken a sword now and then. They've taken an arrow, but they've learned from it. They survived it. They get stronger with every mistake and every failure. Racing is an environment. Sport in general, business are environments that teach you how to handle these things. But if you're going to survive, just like a warrior, a gladiator, you have to be good at taking what life gives you from the moments that are of despair, from your mistakes, and seeing them in a way that helps you grow instead of hanging on to them and using them as your excuse to be a victim in life. Don't be a victim. If you can take anything from this, I want you to remember that you're in control of how you translate what happens to you. And you can put any kind of shade on anything that happens in life. You're the one that translates things, that changes what things mean to you. And then they change the way you feel. They change the way you act and react. And your life takes a different course, depending on what you do. I hope you got this. Lessons can be found everywhere, even in F1, 2 and 3, in the glamorous world of smoke to sport. You can take things that apply to absolutely everybody. These are personal skills. Personal skills you can apply to anything you want. Perseverance, overcoming disappointment. I hope this helps in some way, everybody. See you next time.